saw a YouTube video on a material to clean wooden body planes from American Woodworker and I liked it. We're going to try that out plus I'm going to add something to another mix just because I want to. I want to give it a shot too. Um, I use turpentine normally to clean mine and it's questionable. I've had some people say it's a little bit too abrupt. If used with care and removed and cleaned and then oiled afterwards, I have yet to have any problem after three years of doing it. I'm in a very humid climate in Mississippi. Uh, woodworms are bad here and you'll find a lot of the planes are eaten from them. The combination that American Woodworker suggested and showed was Murphy's Oil Soap, Paste Wax, and Bolt Linseed Oil applied with some 4 alt steel wool and then some rags until the plain body was clean. I'm going to do that and I'm going to add a mixture with turpentine for mine. And the first mixture is going to be equal parts in thirds and then my mixture is going to be equal parts into fourths. And we're going to test it on the same plane, one side to the other. See what we come up with. Okay? It's like a major science experiment, doesn't it? Wax is in both. BLO, boiling seed oil, and then turpentine is going to be on my left side. So I'm going to place a piece of tape and we're going to clean the left hand side with my additive added to it and the right hand side with American Woodworkers. If you notice I've got worm holes in here and my reasoning behind the turpentine is to get a little bit of the, bit of the extra grime out of them and also just to fume and be sure that I kill any creatures that are in the plane. Um, I've been known to take and put some turpentine on them, throw them in a Ziploc bag and leave them for a couple of days and you know you get rid of them then. If you notice this one has something. I don't know if it's set in some material. It is a film of some sort across it. Turpentine. That direction. Just for Dave. I will get confused. Because they're both the same base mixture, I'm going to do the right hand side first. Now, in the video, They took some 4 alt steel and did a good scrubbing. It's creamy. It's all natural, so you can put your fingers in it and just get after it. And I'm sorry about the noise, but there's a rainstorm outside. Both. Don't be sparing with it. Get it on there. It smells good, I'll give it that. Now we'll do the turpentine side. Okay, let's uncover. A 
I believe the turpentine helped remove the stain on this side a good bit better. It did put a little dent on it here in the center of this one. And here, I really can't tell the difference. Not a great difference. I do like it, as you can tell by this. It is removing a good grip of debris. I think for initial cleaning when I first get my planes, I'm going to use with the turpentine. And for secondary cleaning, later maintenance, I'll use the one without turpentine. Because the turpentine is a little bit rough, but it's not that bad. It is natural. And that's Dave's opinion. Uh, thank you, American Woodworker, for giving that. It works. And it's easy on the hands. No gloves. Get these little guys. This one is really dirty. Let's see what we can do with it. Nice piece of beach, too. Beautiful under there. Here I want to saturate, as you've seen me do in my other videos, these with bull linseed oil. I want to put it in there until it quits soaking it in totally. Forget you've got end grain down inside the throat. It's going to soak up a good bit. I've been known to stand them on end sitting in BLO when they're too when they're extremely dry for four to twenty-four hours and just let the grain pull it up inside the wood. That linseed oil will set up after time, and it helps strengthen it, it revitalizes it. You can't go wrong with it. These irons being as rusty as they are, I'm going to just give them a good brushing. A good clean up. I brushed them and they got a bend or two in them, which is not a big deal with these old irons. Reason being, the body of this iron is wrought iron why it's called an iron obviously yeah but it, it you can bend it really easy and you can put it back they take a piece of steel and they forge weld it they stick a piece of metal to it they get it above critical temperature 1330 degrees and they beat it together and it becomes one and that's where your edge goes and the steel holds it but I want to get these a little bit in better shape and got to get rough Just enough. That's a lot better. 
ますね。Little hole, little still hole. See what happens. I just want to work it in real good. What I've got here is a core stone. These are oil stones. And some honing oil. All we are worried about is just the tip. seen any of my stuff if you've seen this routine before but now I've got the bottoms fairly flat I got some 320 400 600 800 thousand 2000 I'm gonna go through each one check the back for flat go with the contour of the plane and then just go through the grits I've got a point here on my board and I'm just watching the hatch marks. The paper's going to draw lines in it. Now with this 320, now's the time to get the rough spots and get your shaping done. You want to keep it to the same contour as the bottom of the plane. So you want to go evenly across it. With that said, if you've got a bad spot, you're going to have to work the other areas just as much to get to the bad spot. That's really it. And then I'm going to go through each grit. That was 320. Next is 400. All the way through 2000. Okay, <clears throat> I did strop them, let's see, oh yeah, shaving fine, alright, so get my brass hammer, please hit metal with metal, wood with wood, Piece of pine. I'm advance it just a touch. And my line's not straight. keep a stick on a string tied to my bench for this reason. Don't ever go at the mouth with a piece of metal. When you get stoppages, it's a lot easier to reach down in there with a little thin dowel or a chopstick or a skewer and clear it. That has taken some swell. I had no problems with this plane being as thick and as heavy as it is. With this thin wall, eighth inch round, that wedge is pushing it a bit. The wax has mineral spirits in it. BLO, BLO is an oil. The turpentine, I've never had to do that before because it evaporates fast enough. There may be some water content in the Murphy's. It's causing the swelling. It's 
specially formulated with water, coconut and plant derived cleaning ingredients, natural fragrance and 2% synthetic ingredients. So the water may have swollen in a little bit. Lesson learned and that was the path we were headed with this to see how it worked. Well guys, um, that was my first time trying that mixture. Normally I use pure turpentine, clean the plane with steel wool, and then BLO it and go through the procedures of uh, putting it through the grits, getting the iron cleaned up, square, shape, flat, sharp, put back in and put to use. That was again my first time. Um, I do like it. I like the fact that uh, it, it, it worked well. On bigger planes, it'd be fine. If you're getting down to the real thin ones, the eighth inch, and anything real small, or you've got thin walls on the side of your molding planes, you may have to wait and see. So, out of five stars, four and a half. Okay? Thanks, man.